Good afternoon and welcome to episode number seven of All Things Ilyas podcast. This is your host, Ramel Ilyas. And after a short break, ya boy is back. Before we start, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Subscribe now to the channel so you can be aware of my new uploads, my shorts, my weekly or bi-weekly upload of the podcast episode. And also follow us on Instagram and I'll uh, try posting the TikTok link in the description below. We're on TikTok, it's happened. I want to start this podcast with on a high note. This podcast is supposed to be hitting these hot topics, these hard-hitting topics that we need to talk about. And the most important one with today's date in mind is the Valentine's Day. Because it is today. It's the 14th of Feb. The day is Tuesday. I'm filming the episode. And um, Valentine's Day is obviously a scam. It's a scam to get your money away from you. Guys and gals. If you're Muslim, it's haram. Don't do it. Don't leave work for your half an hour break. Walk down from the office to the Westfield in Belconnen as you're going to Coles to buy some roti because they have nice roti in Coles. And as you're there, you buy some like bananas because you like bananas for breakfast, which is a bit sus, but that's okay. And then don't just on the way back stop at Gorman and buy flowers for $45 because that's expensive. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. I'm not, I don't know who in their right mind would do that. As you wait there and you look at this cute bouquet of roses and you're like, this looks affordable. And then you pick it up and now the shopkeeper's in your face. It's, it's too late. Don't just take your card out and pay $45 for like nine flowers because that's not economical. That's not a financially viable decision choice. And then don't try to hide that in your Coles bag above your roti because you don't want people to see it. Don't do that. I don't know who would ever do that. I don't do that. So a lot of you on this day will try to declare and celebrate your love for people and um, we'll probably make some stupid financial choices and this podcast aims to help you not make those stupid choices but the thing is that once i release it which is a few days after i record it valentine's day will already be over so your dumb mistakes can't be stopped but i'm trying to do what's right and that is to provide guidance for the unguided youth this occasion, this day will bring some people joy, some people not so much joy. And um, the thing is that a lot of you will engage in these with young love, though. With young love, you know, you, you, get, you get sort of carried away um, about how you express it, how you sort of see it. Sometimes you make poor choices in your partners or in the people you trust or are with and that's okay because gym awaits for you for losers other losers who don't have anyone go hug your mom which reminds me i'm gonna call mine in a few hours because i'm also a part of you i am with you guys dude this is this is it we're in this together the thing with my mom is that regardless of any day, Mother's Day or Valentine's Day, she's like, well, a mom should have a day every year because you can't repay me because I carried you. And my mom says, Tum meri ek ah kahi saab nahi de sakte. 
and that would have been cool. But I was a C-section baby, dude. She was probably out. So I don't know what she's talking about. This guilt trip. She took the easy way. She's got the big old scar on her belly, though. So um, probably not the easiest way. And um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> for those of you who will get your heart broken and that's, that happens, that's okay. It's perfectly normal. You need to make sure that you join the gym. Probably not the club line that's close to my house because I'm trying to keep it low, dude. Kids from school already hog my gym time and that's okay. I can't stop them from coming, but keep it moving, bro. Why is there six of you on like two machines, you know? And now you're like, you're, you're, you're like working out and you're chatting and you're happy and it's bothering me on the inside because I'm resentful. Because I want that rat, dude. I went to a big uh, gym in Gangalan in Club Lime. And I got talked into it. Because what I, my sort of like pet peeve is to go into a big commercial gym that's overcrowded. Because you're always in a rush. You never get to do your planned workout. Because everything is taken. Unless you go at like 4 in the morning. Or like 11 p.m. or something. It has to be like a very, very odd time for you to be able to uh, have that ease of access. Because I've got uh, like a better range of equipment, yes. But there's also so many people there. You're always in a rush. It's a doggy dog world, dude. A doggy dog. Because I was there and I was trying to do some bench pressing, but I couldn't find a, like a, because there was one bench press in the entire gym, and then you've got the free weight racks, and then I finally got a rack, but there was no bench for like half an hour. And then I got a bench finally, but it couldn't, it was like a flat bench, I couldn't incline it, you know, because your boy's like chest has to be worked out in all proportions, in all upper and lower chest spaces. Uh, the upper chest and the lower chest. And um, and then I started doing back because I just had like a like a barbell. So and eventually I um because the weird thing about it is that it's so super, it's like super crowded. So everyone is just like in a rush. They're trying to get to things, they're trying to like finish their workout. All adults that is. If you're going to school and you're in your teens and stuff, you have all day. I've been there. I've been that guy. There's no rush. You know, everything for you is done. You've got all your chores. You know, you, you live with your parents. Life is good. You'll go home. You'll get a home-cooked meal sorted out for you. I don't have that. I live alone. Well, with a housemate, but alone. So, um, and then eventually at the end of it, I sort of did whatever I could do. Like my routine, my planned workout was out the window. And eventually I went to the lat pull down machine. You know how they've got it across? Like there's a lat pull in and there's a lat pull down. And you just, when people are like on both sides of it, it just gets super awkward. So I'm trying not to look. So this young lady sort of like sits across from me and I'm trying to do lat pull downs. And I'm like, well, she's doing lat pull downs and I'm doing the pull ins. And um, I'm trying to look on the floor because I don't want to be posted on TikTok. Because I'm not a gym creep. Sometimes I do look at people to see their form. Mostly men. Sometimes even women. But just to check the form and be humbled and impressed by it. Because people lift so much weight, dude. What sort of encouraged me to like increase my weight in squats was I looked at this probably lady my age, I would say, squatting 100 kilos, dude. And I was stuck at 95. And that helped me push that sort of in my mind. I'm like, you. I got humbled, first of all, got super humbled. And as I see her doing it, I sort of amp myself up. I'm like, well, if she can do it, so can you, but in a healthy, competitive way. So it's sort of the gym and the gym culture as is, I think it inspires me. There's one kid that comes to my gym. I've been 
I've been seeing him here and there in like for the past two and a half, three years time. And it's mind blowing how impressive his gains have been. He's become so much stronger as well. Like I used to see him struggle with uh, 40 kilos um, on a barbell. And now my man yesterday, he squatted 120 kilos. And that's impressive. And I think he's barely like 18 as well. So that's super impressive. And that's why I feel like the gym sort of like keeps you in check and humbles you because you see these incredible strong people and that drives you to push yourselves even more. But going back to that awkward lat sort of pull down story. Now this young lady is sitting across from me. She's doing lat pull downs. I'm doing lat pull ins. And I'm, I don't want to make eye contact because that's just weird, but just, you can't help it. Because you want to look up and sometimes you just look right at them and then you just, you, like, you look away. And um, I don't want to end up on TikTok as a gym creep, you know? Some lady be like, oh, This POE, a creep at the gym in the back, look at him, look at me four times as I slam my weights on the floor and I talk into a camera and I glance at him every 30 seconds because he's a creep. But I think a lot of that gym culture sort of like the toxicity has been sort of handled and washed away by Joey Swole and other people who've got leveled heads. But with that being said, don't be creepy. And that goes across the board. Don't be creepy to anyone. There's no harm in like glancing or looking in someone's direction as long as you're not being creepy, like you don't stalk them. And then approach them if you clearly are sure that they don't want to be approached. And a lot of people in the gym are there to work out. They are there to work on themselves. Mostly, you're just unknown. They don't even see you because they're there for themselves. And they want to work on themselves and improve. So, it's important that in a shared space, we feel comfortable and we make others feel comfortable. Now, I'm not going to lie, looking at cameras, sometimes in the gym, it's, it, 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 it does not happen a lot in my gym, but sometimes people have their cameras out, and I try to stay the hell out as much as I can, to the point where I was doing um, an ab workout on a bench, on a straight bench in a corner, and I and these two girls were across from you on the floor, like working out. And um, from the corner of my eye, I see a light flash. Maybe it was a phone torch. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying they recorded me or something. But as soon as I just saw that, I turned my head towards the wall because I didn't want to be in it or just be like a weird guy who's like on a TikTok and he doesn't even know. Um, like, look at this guy. He doesn't even know how to do abs. I'm trying to work out, you know? We're here to learn. So that's that. And in the other big news here, the biggest news actually, uh, a few weeks ago I found out that Zac Efron has landed in Australia. He was in a disguise, he was, he was hiding from the media or the paparazzi or like whatever, he had a hat on and a mask sort of in his shades and he couldn't be recognized. So... With that big news, I also found out that the last time Zac Efron was in Australia, this one time, actually, not the last time, this one time, at the Gold Coast, shooting for a movie. Um, he was in a cafe, and the barista, well, his waiter, actually, his server, um, they sort of, you know, make eye contact, they exchange pleasantries, and then he ended up dating her. When I look at that, I think about all the opportunities I could have had. Because I've done security, because I'm Pakistani and brown. It's a profession we all do. That's like a requirement. If you're Pakistani and you haven't done security, what are you doing? You know? So, um, in my head, 
So I thought about, visualized about a time that could be possible where Kate Blanchett just comes by a hotel where I'm doing security and she's attracted to my Pakistani accent. And I stand there with my security license and I open the door for her and she looks at me and she says, hello. And I go, hello. And she walks in and as, as soon as I say hello, she's just taken away. She's just, I've taken her breath away. She's mesmerized by my beauty, by my handsomeness and um, the sound of my voice. And I say, have you got a reservation? And she says, no. And then we look at each other, we make eye contact. And she's smiling and she's falling in love and so am I because that's Kate Blanchett, right? And within this short time, things have progressed. They have escalated. As I look at her and I say, how can we help you today? The reception is over there. And she walks away, glancing back at me every now and then. And she's having a chat at the, with the receptionist. And I am still looking at her. This is tense. My heart is beating. Is it love? Or am I just a toy she wants to play with? But my heart and my mind are at war. My mind says, hey man, She's just going to use you because of your ethnic characteristics. But my heart says, nah, man, this is what we call love. And now some time has passed and we're already catching up for coffee. I'm telling her all my tales from Pakistan. And she's telling me about her Hollywood life, her tough schedule of movies and advertisements that she shoots and all the brand deals and the podcast she's doing. And I say to her, I also want to do a podcast. That is also my passion. And then again, it's just we just match so much that the connection just intensifies and now it's been a year and she's asked me to move to the U.S. with her where she has a big house where I just get to hang out and stay. And um, one day she comes over and she tells me that she has to go for a shoot for three months. And I say, it is enough. It, you keep breaking my heart, Kate. Every time I want to spend time with you, you go away from me. I cannot take it anymore. It hurts me. And she's also heartbroken and I'm heartbroken. And I look at her and I say, I cannot live like this, Kate. And she says, I understand. And as she's leaving with her bags, leaving me behind in this big mansion, we both know that the damage can't be repaired and that I will always love her and that indeed I was a toy she wanted to play with. I think I went too far in this story. Looping it back into the Valentine's Day, um, I was thinking about like the weddings and stuff how they happen here in Australia or in the West, as opposed to that subcontinental culture in India and Pakistan. And I was reading, am I the asshole, like posts on Instagram or something like, am I the asshole for being in a dress at my ex's wedding and like, you know, and upsetting my ex's fiance and yada, yada, yada. And that's a big deal for like white people in the West. For just people in the West, that's kind of, that's weird to say, just white people in the West. For people in the West, 
you cannot outdress the bride. You cannot wear white or off-white or something white to a wedding because that's the color of the bride. Brown weddings? Oh, 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 you've got another thing coming, dude. That lehenga that you're in, dude, let's compete immediately because I'm going to put my, my lehenga on for my own wedding. Let's have a bridal beat off. That's weird. Let's have a bride off. People don't give up. Damn, dude. They, we, out, we outdress each other as much as we can. Especially the women, dude. They don't care. There's no upsetting. Oh my God, this is the beautiful day. No one cares about your day, dude. It's for three days. They're all your days. But they're also our days. So we'll dress as fancily as we want, dude. We'll be in our own wedding dresses. And you cannot do anything about it. And that's on culture, dude. I just uh, recently have found something interesting um, to watch. And, and that's two things that I want to talk about. One, I want to talk about the one of the best recent horror movies I've ever watched. That is called The Black Phone. And the premise of the movie is that there is a child abductor. Uh, the movie is based in the 1970s or the 80s. I can't remember. And um, there's a child abductor. He's in the area and he's like targeting these uh, teen, these like preteen boys. Uh, so he's tar so he's targeting, he's targeting these preteen boys and he's kidnapping them and, um, it's happening one after the other and it's got Ethan Hawke in it who plays the bad guy and without showing anything gore or any, or any, um, explicit like details of what could have happened, they just that movie is just based on extracting your actual fear. Like they don't have to show any gore or abductions or any torture or anything. It's just the idea of it in your head. It's so well like paced and well shot and it's got a few jump scares. Yes, but it's just the constant buildup of like fear that I was impressed by. And it's a very good movie. Obviously, it would be because it, it has Ethan Hawke in it. But um, if you haven't watched it and you like scary movies, I think The Black Phone on Netflix is your go-to. I haven't really come across a, a good horror movie in the recent times, and it's been a while. So I would highly advise to watch The Black Phone on Netflix. Second, I want to talk about... Um, this random like post I saw on Facebook about a scene in a movie called Bones and All. So what's happening here is that um, there are these girls, these uh, like teenage girls are hanging out and they're sort of like talking and I'll play it, but I will not probably add the video because I don't want my podcast video to get flagged. But these girls are like hanging out and sort of, my dad wouldn't tell me anything. It's gotten sort of um, now. So there's like four girls in total. The two girls are sort of like doing their nails. They're sitting on the couch. And there's the, these like two girls are lying under a glass table. And the camera shot is like right like above them. And uh, they're facing each other. The shoulder to shoulder. Sort of very, very close. There could be possibly... Uh, indications of intimacy. We'll find out. Try that. It's called copper fever. These are the girls, yep. They're sort of leaning in it's and she's showing her, her nails. And she's holding her hand. Sort of cutely on her finger. And she's <laughs> biting on her hand, dude. She just goes for it and all right her finger is all like messed up the dragon her by her feet and yep that's that and now she's run away from that place 
And that's all I know and I want to know about this movie. I will watch it later. But how creepy is that? We'll try to keep it short this week as well. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe now to the channel so I can keep making content for you. Um, thank you for your time. And I will see you next week. Homero Elias is out. <laughs>